Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome and it is great to have you. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with classmates, colleagues or friends or anyone else you think might benefit from watching. So now that we are introduced, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in our series and playlist about non-parametric methods or non-parametric statistics. And in this video, we will focus on the conceptual background of the Wilcoxon rank sum slash Man Whitney test because they are essentially the same thing. I'll talk more about that as we go. In the previous videos, we were looking at the location of the median for one sample. This begins our look into comparing the medians of two samples. So let's go ahead and learn about the Wilcoxon rank sum test and the Man Whitney test. Here we go. So a few notes. The Wilcoxon rank sum test and the Man Whitney test achieve the same result and are essentially the same test. They do, however, have slightly different test statistics. Sometimes you will see it as Man Whitney Wilcoxon test. So in some textbooks and other resources, they actually combine the names into one long name called the Man Whitney Wilcoxon test. Both are testing for the location of or comparing two medians. Now it can be used with quantitative data or ordinal data because in the end, as you'll learn, we're actually gonna turn everything into ordinal data anyway. Now if you are looking for one test, say the Wilcoxon rank sum test in your software and you can't find it, it might be listed as the other test, so the Man Whitney test. It really depends on the software you're using. But just realize that the Wilcoxon rank sum test and the Man Whitney test are the same, they give the same result, and sometimes they're actually listed combined as the Man Whitney Wilcoxon test. Depends on the software and the book you're using. Now, each test has its own set of subscripts and notation, so don't get confused. But in the end, they're essentially the same test. So a little bit of background. So if we were doing a parametric version of this test for two samples, that will lead us to use the independent samples t-test. So the independent samples t-test is the first comparison test we learn about in basic statistics. In that test, we are comparing the location of two means from two samples, and those samples are assumed to have normal distributions. So if you remember the independent samples t-test, this is really the non-parametric version of that test. Now, in the case of that parametric test, the independent samples t-test, most of the time, we would be comparing if the two samples are equal, or the means of those two samples are equal. Now, another way of saying that is that the difference between those two means is zero. The assumption, however, is that each population is normally distributed. The Wilcoxon rank sum or the Mann-Whitney test allows us to compare two populations where the underlying distributions are not normal, but do have similar shapes. Now to do that, we use the ranks of our observations within the sample, not the actual underlying value. That's why it's called the Wilcoxon rank sum test. We're gonna use the ranks. So we'll take our values, line them up, and turn them into ranks. So here is our general hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the two populations are the same, or the medians are in the same location. The alternative hypothesis states that the two populations are not the same, or the locations of the medians of the two populations are not the same. So rejecting our null hypothesis means that one population tends to have either smaller or larger values than the other. It really depends on what type of hypothesis we set up. Now, one-tailed tests are also possible, just like we have in the independent samples t-test we talked about before, if a certain direction of the difference is hypothesized. So we could say that the two medians are in the same location or are equal, or we could say that one median is above another, or we could say that one median is below another. All of those are possible in the Wilcoxon rank sum or Man whitney test. So let's go ahead and look at some visuals so you can envision this in your mind. So the first case, we have population one over here on the right. Its median is denoted by the vertical line. On the left, we have population two, and its median is denoted by the vertical line. 
Now notice, there's not much overlap between these two populations and the medians are pretty far apart. Now in this case, the populations are a bit closer together. So there is a bit of overlap in the middle. The median for population one is a bit closer in distance to the median of population two. Now in this third example, we can see that the populations are pretty much completely overlapping. The location of the median for population one and the location for the median of population two are very, very close. So here we can see three examples, starting with the populations are very far apart, do not overlap, and the medians have quite a bit of distance between them. All the way to the bottom, where the populations are overlapping and the medians are very close. Now another way of thinking about this in terms of our hypothesis is this. At the top, we would most likely reject our null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis states that these two populations are the same, that the location of their medians are the same. Now down below, we would probably fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that of course is because the populations basically overlap and the locations of the medians are very, very close to each other. So look at the visual over here in the left part of the slide and then match that to the hypothesis formulation over here on the right. So you can kind of see this in your mind, how one relates to the other. Okay, so let's look at an example without actually running the numbers. We'll do that in the next video. But here is sort of a problem example of how this works. We'll call it the Mumbai Starbucks. So 10 students from Mumbai, India, who often study at Starbucks were asked to provide ratings for two stores. Five students were asked to review the Churchgate store, which we'll denote with the letter C. A different set of five students was asked to review the Natterman Point store, which we'll use the letter N to denote. Now the survey covered five criteria, cleanliness, service, facilities, drink quality, and food quality, each on a scale of one to five. So therefore the lowest possible score is five. So if one of the stores got a one on all of these criteria, that would sum up to five, and the maximum is 25. So if another store got a five on each of the five categories, those would sum to 25. However, the score itself is not really important. What we're looking for is the rank. We're gonna compare the ranks of the scores. So let's take an extreme example just for the sake of learning. Let's say it turns out like this. So for the first five ranks, if we put all the scores in order, the first five ranks are occupied by the Netterman Point store. So rank one, two, three, four, and five. And then the final five ranks are occupied by the church gate store. So six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now what we do is we sum the ranks, hence the Wilcoxon rank sum test that's in the name. So for Netterman Point, we sum one, two, three, four, and five. We have a total sum of our ranks, which is 15. For the church gate store, we do the same thing. So six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So the sum of those ranks is 40. Therefore, the sampling distribution for the sum of the ranks is between 15 and 40. So the lowest possible sum of ranks we can have here is this case, one, two, three, four, five, or 15. The maximum sum of ranks we could have in this situation is six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, which is 40 and that is the range of our sampling distribution. Now this is important. If the populations for each one of these stores is the same in terms of their scores and their ranks, we would expect the sum of the ranks to be near the middle. So in the low end, we have 15. On the high end, we have 40. The middle of those two numbers is 27.5. So if the stores overlap in their ranks, or if they overlap in their visual distribution, we would expect the sum of the ranks to be near 27.5. But in this case, we have one extreme of 15, the other extreme of 40. So therefore, it would look something like this visually. So all of Churchgate's ranks are on one side, all of Netterman Point's ranks are on the other side, there is no overlap at all, and therefore we would reject the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis states that these two populations are equal well, in this case, they are obviously not equal. They don't even overlap 
at all in this case. So now let's examine the other extreme where the ranks are mixed. So in this case, we can see that each store alternates in terms of the rank. So we have Netterman Point in rank one, Churchgate two, and then Netterman Point, Churchgate, so on and so forth, all the way down are 10 observations. So in this case for Netterman Point, it's one, three, five, seven, and nine. The sum is 25. The sum of the ranks is 25. For Churchgate, it's two, four, six, eight, and 10. The sum of the ranks is 30. Now remember, if the populations are the same, we would expect the sum of the ranks to be near the middle, which in this case is 27.5. Well, in this case, this is as close as we can get. So alternating one, three, five, seven, nine gives us a sum of rank of 25. The other side, two, four, six, eight, 10, a sum of rank of 30. That's the closest we're gonna be able to get in this situation to 27.5, which is actually the middle. So as we can see in this situation, the rank sums are much closer to the average if we average the ranks together. So the populations look like this. We have Netterman Point slightly to the left because it begins with rank one. Then we have Churchgate slightly off set to that because it begins on rank two and therefore they overlap quite a bit. So in this case, we would probably fail to reject the null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis states that these two populations or these two stores are the same. The median location is the same. And we can see here, at least visually and mathematically, that because they overlap so much, that these probably come from the same population and there is no difference between the rank sums of Netterman Point and the rank sums of Churchgate. So again, we can have different hypotheses in the situation. So we can have a two-tailed test where we think the difference between the medians is zero. We can have a lower-tailed test where the difference between the medians is greater than or equal to zero. The alternative would be the opposite, so less than zero. And remember from way back when, the little trick to remember is that the alternative hypothesis points in the direction of your test. So this is a lower-tailed test. Therefore, we have the less than sign is pointing to the left, and that's how we can remember it's a lower-tailed test. Upper tail test is the exact opposite. So we can have the null hypothesis is that it's less than or equal to zero. And the alternative hypothesis is that it's greater than zero. So the sign is pointing to the right, the greater than sign. Therefore, we know it's an upper tailed test. In the Wilcoxon rank sum and the Man Whitney test, we can do any of these situations. Okay, so last slide of this presentation. How do we do this step by step? Now to keep this video reasonable in length, I went ahead and split it up into two parts. So this was the conceptual background and the next video will actually go into Excel and I'll show you manually how to do this step by step. So how does it work? First, we place our samples into two columns. So in this case, it would have been Netterman Point and Churchgate. We put those in two separate columns. In the third column, we then take those two samples and we stack them on top of each other into one longer combined sample, so into one column. In a fourth column, we then rank each value in the stacked column. Now for any tied ranks, we use the average rank. And luckily Excel has an actual function for this. It's called rank.avg or rank average. And here's how it works. Let's say we have four numbers. So the first rank and then the second, third and fourth numbers. Let's say however, that the second and third numbers are the same. They tie. So one is not the second rank and one is not the third rank because they're the same number. In that case, we take the average of those two numbers. So for those four numbers, the ranks would be actually one, 2.5, 2.5, and four. And that's what the average rank means. And that's what the rank.avg function does in Excel. And again, we'll see this in practice in the next video. Then we sum the ranks for each sample. You could do that manually. You could do that using an if function in Excel. You could do that using a pivot table, whatever suits you. But we sum the ranks that belong to each sample individually and separately. Then we use the sampling distribution and test statistic, which we'll learn about in the next video, to find the p-value. Again, very similar to how we do it in parametric statistics. Then we compare that p-value to our chosen alpha level 
which is usually 0 0.05, but it could be 0 0.01, 0 0.10, whatever your tolerance is for type one, type two error. Okay, so now you have that foundational, fundamental, conceptual idea of what's going on in the Wilcoxon rank sum test, the Mann-Whitney test, and of course, in non-parametric methods and non-parametric statistics overall. So by seeing this example, by seeing these visuals, you can actually understand what is going on. So in the next video, we'll actually hop into Excel. We'll use a different example problem. And don't worry, if you love Mumbai, which I do, I hope to get there someday, we'll get back to that data at a later video in this playlist. But we'll do a different type of problem. We'll look at actual course evaluations for a professor and see if that professor improved from one semester to the next using the Wilcoxon rank sum and the Mann Whitney test. Okay, so that wraps up this introduction to the Wilcoxon rank sum test, also known as the Mann Whitney test, where we compare two populations, more specifically the location of two medians for two populations, according to the summed ranks of their values. And in the next video, we will go into Excel and do an example step by step. Thank you very much for watching. I wish you all the best in your work and in your studies, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye-bye.